Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit, NFIU, was established in June 2004 and is the central national agency in Nigeria responsible for the receipt and analysis of financial disclosure, currency and suspicious transaction reports, and dissemination of intelligence generated to competent authorities. It also coordinates the country's anti-money laundering and combating finance and terrorism, AML and CFT regime. A very good evening to you and welcome to the program, The Eagle. My name is Aisha Gamberi. With me on the program is Aisha Mohammed. Hello. Hi, Aisha. Good evening and thank you for being part of the program again. We hope you will sit back and enjoy the program. <laughs> FCC will get you anywhere, anytime. As the nation grapples with terrorism and violent crimes, staff of the Infrastructure Concession Regulatory Commission, ICRC, have been advised to be vigilant and security conscious at all times. The advice was the high point of presentations at the Security Awareness Lecture organized for the Commission and its staff by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission in Abuja, Nigeria. Also today, a suspected first-star, John Nzamadu, has been arrested by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, for impersonating a staff of the Federal Ministry of Finance, Abuja. Kamali Gebi will also bring you a report on the disturbing rise in bank fraud-related cases and how the EFCC is tackling the scourge. Please stay tuned as the program continues right after the break. Don't go away. Cheers. 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 What is it? Please, keep to yourself. Chivurabo, I got your telephone call. Every time I close my eyes, yes. I see dead people chasing me in my sleep. My Jehovah Magadam. Is it possible for someone to become restless just because of his past? Nevertheless, unless you kill somebody dead, then the spirit will be haunted you. Hey! Was you all contractors? I embezzled all the money for the roads that are now death traps, killing people every day. I approved the supplies of fake drugs on pipe on water. I embezzled the money at the fear chief. You are supposed to feel you have a special man that you don't know of EMCC. I chose to be here to do to stop other people with money. EMCC, as soon as they captured them, threats to prison. Jail. 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 Ah! Are you there? Life are not just about acquire wealth. Making money. When other people are dead, they didn't die of hunger and neglect. Be careful. EFCC, I watch. EFCC will get you anywhere, anytime. Our first report today begins with the EFCC's Security Awareness Lecture organized for the staff of Infrastructure Concession Regulatory Commission, ICRC. Zainab Sani Hamed has the report. Please stay with us. As the nation grapple with terrorism and violent crimes, staff of the Infrastructure Concession Regulatory Commission, ICRC, have been advised to be vigilant and security conscious at all times. The advice was the high point of presentations as a security awareness lecture organized for the Commission and its staff by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. The program, which took place at the ICRC conference room, Area 11, Abuja, dwell on the security risks that organizations and their employees are daily exposed to and measures to overcome such risks. Osita Mwaja, EFCC's Deputy Director of Public Affairs, said the program was organized to offer security tips for corporate and private individuals in a bid to raise the awareness of Nigerians on security matters and also to curb the commission of economic and financial crimes in the society. Also speaking on cybersecurity, Wilson Oujarem, Head Media and Publicity EFCC, said, Cybercrime is a new order of threat that corporate organizations and individuals often ignore at their own peril. He identified identity fraud and theft of information as two key cyber threats. According to Uwujarem, and I quote, Your identity is very important 
at the individual and corporate level. When you lose your identity, you lose your integrity. When somebody steals your identity, he compromises your personal integrity. End of quote. Mr. Akile Olateju, head anti-bomb squad EFCC, in his presentation on homemade bomb or improvised explosive device, IED, advised participants to be security conscious and proactive in reporting any strange movement or object around them to security agents. He said, IED are not dropped from heaven or dropped from anywhere. They're carried by human beings. He urged the participants to be familiar with their environment, and if they notice any change, alarms should be raised in order to save lives. In his remark, Aminu Dikko, Director General, ICRC, who was represented by Director, Contract Compliance Department, Mr. Mike Ohayane, appreciated the EFCC for partnering with his agency, saying the relationship will be nurtured to be of mutual benefit to both organizations. I'm Zainab Sani Ahmed, reporting for The Eagle. You're still watching the program, The Eagle. A suspected fraudster, John Inzi Madu, has been arrested by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, for impersonating a staff of the Federal Ministry of Finance, Abuja, in order to defraud a Chinese national. Thelma Eki is our guide. Madu is alleged to have impersonated one barrister, Wilson Amarachi, who is the Secretary of Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Dr. Ngozi Okonjo Iwala, who has been arrested by operatives of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. He was arrested at Diamond Bank, Ojodu Branch, Lagos, where he went to make withdrawals with an ATM card. Investigations showed that Madu allegedly defrauded one Wu Kinzu, a Chinese national, of the sum of more than $5,000 when he allegedly posed as Barisa Wilson Amarachi and deceived the Chinese into believing that he had outstanding payments to collect for contracts executed for the Nigerian government. This he achieved by presenting the Chinese with fake documents from ranking Nigerian officials. He allegedly used different email addresses, two documents purportedly from Daily Sun newspaper, an official gazette purportedly signed by the President Goodluck Jonathan and Senate President David Mark, and an international passport data page purportedly belonging to Barrister Amarachi. Madu contacted Queen Zhu through an online message informing him that he was expected to open a non-resident account in Nigeria and make payments of 300 United States dollars. Queen Zhu complied. Having received the money, Madu requested for additional sum of over $4,000, which the victim also paid through Western Union. Madu was, however, arrested at the bank premises where he went to withdraw proceeds of his fraudulent activities. He will be charged to court after investigations are concluded. Thelma Ake, reporting for The Eagle. Welcome back. Fraud in the Nigerian banking sector is on the rise. The last couple of decades have witnessed a revolution in the way banking transactions are carried out with the advent of new technologies. Unfortunately, scammers are taking advantage of those technologies to perpetrate fraud. In this next report, Carmen Legebi examines the increasing rates of bank fraud in the banking sector and how the EFCC is tackling the scourge. The report. There is no place sacred for a fraudster, not even the bank, where they frequently aim to steal customers' account information and money. Bank fraud is the use of illegal means to obtain money, assets, or other property owned or held by a financial institution. It also involves obtaining money from depositors through diverse fraudulent schemes. While the specific elements of bank fraud vary between jurisdictions, the term applies to actions that employ a scheme to break into the bank's secured network to commit the fraud. Bank fraud is considered as a white-collar crime because it requires technical expertise on the part of the scammers to perfect their crime. One of the more common types of bank fraud is known as identity theft, where a person uses another person's information to obtain money, usually in the form of loans or credit. Somewhat related to identity theft is identity fraud, where credit is obtained by the use of an entirely fictitious identity. While identity theft and similar crimes receive a great deal of publicity, they are far from the only form of bank fraud. Fraud involving checks are common as well. Forging checks or signatures on them, as well as altering checks that have already been written, are two ways in which check fraud is committed. One form of bank fraud that is difficult to detect or stop is that committed by bank employees themselves. 
In many cases, these acts are only discovered by careful auditing of the bank's accounting records or during accounts reconciliation. A complete description of the many possible ways to commit bank fraud would be impossible. But suffice it to say that criminals have gone to great lengths and used remarkable creativity in finding new ways to steal and defraud. In Nigeria, part of measures taken to check bank fraud was the establishment of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. The commission is empowered to prevent, investigate, prosecute and penalize economic and financial crime offenders. It is also charged with the responsibility of enforcing the provisions of other laws and regulations relating to economic and financial crimes. Some of the laws include the Failed Banks, Recovery of Debts and Financial Malpractices in Banks Act 1994 and the Banks and Other Financial Institutions Act 1991. And since its creation, it has successfully apprehended and prosecuted the perpetrators of these crimes. Perhaps its greatest impact in the sector occurred in 2009, amid a looming prospect of bank failure post-consolidation when several banks were certified technically insolvent by the Apex Bank owing to overexposure to non-performing loans. After the CBN sacked some of the bank chiefs, the commission stepped in and helped recover some of the depositors' funds stolen by them. One of the bank executives, Cecilia Ibru, was successfully prosecuted and convicted. Others are still being prosecuted in court, while properties linked to and which are believed to be proceeds of crime have been attached by orders of court. Apart from this, the Commission has continued to apprehend other suspects who are alleged to be involved in bank fraud. Victor Amoshi is a former branch manager of a new generation bank. He was arrested for a credit fraud in the sum of over 81 million naira. The suspect allegedly packaged loan facilities for himself using several names and accounts of some customers of his bank with whom he shared the proceeds. The loans went bad, and the bank had to hold Amoshi, who was on the verge of running out of the country before being apprehended by operatives of the EFCC. Amoshi has since been charged to court. Also arrested are Roland Alozier, Shegun Osho, and their accomplice, Abbas Kolawale. The trio were alleged to have conspired and fraudulently converted a check of over 9 million naira belonging to the Riverstead Board of Internal Revenue. Roland and Shegun, both staff of the Moscow Road Port Harcourt branch of a new generation bank, were alleged to have colluded to convert an EcoBank manager's check belonging to one Roxon Engineering issued as tax payment to the River State Board of Internal Revenue. The third suspect, Abbas Kolawole, was however arrested when he allegedly approached a branch of EcoBank in Lagos to cash the manager's check through his account. Also arrested for allegedly conspiring to steal the sum of over 51 million naira in Kano, are four bankers, Mansur Dallami, Ejiro Eborikbo, Nina Stephen, and Samson Wodo. The suspects, all staff of Zoo Road branch of a first-generation bank, allegedly conspired amongst themselves to issue ATM card to an imposter in the name of Samuel Omede, a bona fide customer of the bank in Bielsa State. After the issuance of the purported ATM card, the imposter used the card to steal the said amount from the customer's account. In Lagos, the Commission arrested six persons, including two staff of a new generation bank, over an alleged 5.5 million naira fraud. The suspects identified as Ademola Okunlola, Tajuddin Oluwanishola, Kolawole Adams, Tamitope Pedro, Bayo Olowoyo, and Otumba Biodun Adebanjo, a 56 year old, were arrested in different parts of Lagos when operatives of the EFCC received a complaint that the suspects had fraudulently transferred the sum of over 5 million naira from the account of one Ajani Karim Musubau, a customer of the bank. The fraudulent transfers took place on March 3, 2014, as Ademola Okunlola, a staff of the New Generation Bank Ikeja Branch Lagos, set the stage for the scam when he covertly used his camera phone to capture the photograph and signature specimen of Musubau. He accessed the account and sent the details to another staff of the bank, Bayo Olowoyo, at the Toyin Street Ikeja branch. The duo reportedly sent Musibau's photograph and signature specimen to another member of their syndicate who effected the money transfer into two accounts domiciled in other banks in two tranches. The suspects had since been charged to court. And in Umar here, three persons who attempted to defraud another new generation bank of 100 million naira through an electronic device called Grabber were arrested and docked by the EFCC before Justice S. A. Umakama of the High Court of Abia State, Umahia, on a two count charge bordering on conspiracy and attempt to steal. The suspects, Godwin Chukwemeka Ojuku, 
Evaristus Moses Oyema and Kenneth Iweha, however, pleaded not guilty to both counts. It was alleged that Ojuku, who was involved in credit card fraud when he was in the United States, recruited Evaristus Moses Oyema and Kenneth Iweha, who were apprehended while attempting to defraud the new generation bank, Mahia Branch. In Joss, Plateau State, four suspects, including two Buru de Change operators, Salih Huliman Mahmoud and Nang Asabi Ibrahim, were also arrested over a billion naira fraud. The other suspects are two students of the University of Joss, Isaiah Friday and Isaiah Samuel. They were alleged to have compromised the bank's database and created huge balances in several accounts across the bank's branches and subsequently transferred funds from those accounts to several accounts in other banks. The commission recovered over 400 million naira from the suspects. They are currently being prosecuted before Justice Latif Lawala Kapo of a Lagos High Court in Ikeja on a three-count charge. Justice DJ Abdul Abuki of the Kano State High Court on June 5, 2014, convicted and sentenced one bright Evobai and Okechuku Okolo to 43 years imprisonment. They were both former employees of a new generation bank. The duo conspired and defrauded the bank to the tune of 9 million naira. The convicts allegedly used stolen letterhead paper belonging to Aminu Kano Teaching Hospital Kano and forged the signatures of four designated signatories, including one of their superiors at the bank, to siphon funds from the hospital's fixed deposit account. Also convicted for similar offences by Justice DJ Abdul Aboki of the same Kano State High Court, was a former staff of a new generation bank, Adiza Mustafa, to five years imprisonment. The convict was arraigned by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, on a 10-count charge that borders on forgery and theft of depositors' funds. With all these arrests and prosecutions, the EFCC is not relenting in its effort at ridding the country of economic and financial crimes. Perpetrators of this hideous crime have a choice to desist or face the full wrath of the law. Banks and other financial institutions should also be vigilant and ensure that due diligence is carried out before employing persons into their system. Nigeria is the sixth largest producer of oil in the world. In over 50 years of oil exploration, the country has earned well over $600 billion as oil revenue. If properly managed, it should provide us with a health system that will save lives and not a decaying health system. A society where energy goes round for meaningful development and not an epileptic power supply system. A productive educational system and not a decaying educational system. A society where jobs are created for self-sustainability and not a society where our youth roam the streets unemployed. A highway of safety and security and not roads that lead us to early graves. We should have credible leaders who deliver dividends of democracy to the people and not corrupt leaders who divert our collective revenue for private use. Say no to corrupt leaders. This message is from the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. Thank you, Kamelu. That was a great and very comprehensive report. Next is the feedback segment with Tidima Amanambo, the report. Bashir Kaoje wrote via Facebook saying, it's a known fact that bankers in this country steal negligible amount compared to our so-called top government officials. I think the EFCC should redirect their efforts and resources towards bringing to book those thieves at the top who steal in trillions. Thank you, Bashir, for your contribution. Inasmuch as we appreciate your concern, would like to remind you that the EFCC's mandate does not permit it to ignore any sector in the discharge of its responsibilities. Contrary to your belief, Fraud in the banking sector also involves billions of naira and the risk such malpractices poses to the nation's economy and to you, the depositor, is better imagined. That's all we have for you this week on the feedback segment. Thanks for your contributions. To be part of this segment, please visit us on facebook.com forward slash official EFCC or follow us on Twitter at official EFCC. You can also watch our programs and other activities on youtube.com forward slash official EFCC. You can call or send a text to the following numbers 0809-3322644 and 0818-3322644. And to report any misconduct by staff of the commission, please log on to dia at efcnigeria.org or call this number 09 9044758 between 8 a.m. 
and 5 p.m. weekdays only. Thank you, Chidema. And with that, we'll wrap it up on today's edition of The Eagle. I remain yours sincerely, Aisha Agambari, saying thank you for watching and God bless Nigeria. From Aisha. Yes, Aisha. The Public Interface Unit of the Public Affairs Department of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, is driving a national discourse online every week. We are focusing on issues of good governance as it affects the anti-corruption crusade in Nigeria. Please join us on Google Plus by searching for official EFCC or official EFCC ng at gmail.com. When signing your Google Plus account, like us or follow us. You can also join us on facebook.com forward slash official EFCC or follow us on Twitter at official EFCC. You can also watch our programs and other activities on youtube.com forward slash official EFCC. And that's it on the program this week. Do join us next week for another exciting package. My name is Aisha Mohammed. Goodbye and God bless Nigeria. <laughs>